<laughs> oh, I was just reading this story. It's about a man who has a wife and two camels, or it, is it a camel and two wives? Anyway, you should read it sometime. Where I come from, stories are so important. That's how we learn about what's happening in our village and in faraway places. And in my village, the best storyteller is a man named Jesus. He uses stories to teach us important things about God. Well, here he is now. Good morning, Rabbi. Good morning, Andrew. I was just at my mother's house. I was telling her this story. <laughs> it's about a man who has a wife and two camels. Or is it a camel and two wives? Anyway, while I was there, she asked me if I would build a wall around her garden to protect it. Now, I don't know much about building walls, and I thought you could help. Well, I don't have time to help you right now, but I'll get you started, then I'll come back later. Well, hello, Naomi. I haven't seen you for days. Good morning, Naomi. Good morning, Rabbi. And look at that festive dress. Yes, you look beautiful. Thank you. Where have you been? I've been at a three-day wedding feast. They were all dressed in their finest clothes. Their hair was anointed with oil and styled so nice. That wedding party knew how to have a good time. It was quite a celebration. Tell me about the food. Did they have good food? Was it good? It was great. Mm. It was a three-day feast. <laughs> I even brought some for the trip home. Would you like some? Uh, thanks, but you can keep it. Speaking of food, Jesus, do you remember when the Pharisees asked you, John's disciples fast often. Why don't your disciples fast? I told those Pharisees, the friends of the bridegroom cannot fast as long as the bridegroom is present. There was no fasting at that wedding feast. I can attest to that. God commands us to fast only one day a year in preparation for the Day of Atonement. The Pharisees, they fast twice a week, and they want everyone to know it. Do not be like those hypocrites. When you fast, anoint your head with oil. Be joyful, like you're going to a party. I even have some oil in my basket. I'm not surprised. It looks like you have a little bit of everything in there. Well, you have to be prepared when you're away from home. Oh, look at this rip, and this is my favorite garment. Oh. Let me help you with that. I have just the right cloth. Hold that, and that, and that. Here it is. Now, that would be a bad patch. <laughs> no one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth onto an old garment, or else it'll pull away from the tear, making it worse. Oh, looks like this is empty. Let's fill it up with the new wine we made. You do not put new wine into an old wine skin because it's already stretched and hardened. It'll burst. No, you put new wine into new wineskins, and then both will be preserved. So is he saying we use old wine or new wine? I don't think he's talking about wine at all. Everywhere we go, people ask, what's this new doctrine he's teaching? It really isn't anything new, but it's what God intended all along. That's right. It was the rabbis, not the prophets, that came up with hundreds of rules and regulations, creating traditions that don't even come from God. There hasn't been a prophet in Israel for hundreds of years until now. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for something new. <laughs> <laughs>